guys, welcome back. It says hi to <laughs> Sebastian says hi. Hi, Mommy. <laughs> If you're, yeah, Sebastian is currently in the tub. So if you hear screaming, he's okay. He just doesn't like the bath. If you guys are new to my channel or simply not yet subscribed, definitely make sure to hit the subscribe button. I am posting every single day for 31 days. So you're not gonna wanna miss a single episode. On top of that, I am doing a giveaway. So all you have to do to enter is like this video, hit the subscribe button, and comment down below what you are going to be for Halloween. Simple, quick, and easy. We're going to get into some creepy, true, spooky stories. So this one is titled, The Boy With No Eyes. You cannot be in the video with no clothes. No! No. Yeah, I see that. So it goes. One night when I was 10, I was woken up by my bedroom door opening, followed by someone sitting on my bed. I felt my leg grazed and the bed sink under a person's weight. It's just mom, I thought, and I opened my eyes. It was not my mom. I found an eyeless boy. He had black, empty sockets. About my age, sitting at the foot of my bed, he extended his hand and in it was a little box. I was startled, but it reached out. He pulled back. I reached again, said, give it. Then I blinked. And when I reopened my eyes, he was gone, but I could still see the imprint where he sat on my bed. Fast forward to five years, my girlfriend came over to do homework. After she finished, she took a nap while she waited for her parents. When they arrived, I tried waking her up. She opened her eyes suddenly, looking up at a corner where the wall met the ceiling. She pointed there and went back to sleep. I shook her again. She came to full consciousness and I explained what she'd done. She looked haunted. Up on the wall, I saw a little boy with no eyes. He was there in a Spider-Man pose, staring at me. I freaked out and told her my story about the same kid. Fast forward another five years. I was with the same girlfriend and we had a two-year-old. We were living in my parents' house in my old room. My daughter started waking up at the same time every night and she talked. After a while, I noticed she had almost the same conversation every night. I playfully asked her once whom she was talking to. She said, it's a little boy. He's nice. He's lost and looking for his mommy. My daughter's nightly conversations continued until we got our own place later that year. The next one is the Red Lady of Huntington College. Here's a story that dates back to 1910. But almost any student at Huntington College in Montgomery, Alabama should recognize it. That's because the events that led up to it are said to actually have happened. As the story goes, in 1910, a young woman who was new to the school was known for the love, her love of the color red. Sadly, she was also known for being strange and a little bit of a loner. As the first term got underway, the young woman grew increasingly isolated. Eventually, she ended up taking her life. Her body was discovered in a red gown drenched in blood. From then on, students and faculty have been reported sightings of a young woman dressed in all red. She's appeared all around the college's campus. The figure dwelling in perpetual isolation is often cited as a reminder of the importance of being kind to one's peers. The next one we have is the Ashley Street Ghost. Huntington College is just one of the many haunted colleges in America with its own ghost stories. The next true tale comes from the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. The haunting happened in 1972. At a party hosted by University of Michigan students living on Ashley Street, a 15-year-old girl who probably had no business being there in the first place suddenly felt a strange bone-chilling cold. In an attempt to warm up, she went upstairs. That's when things went, really went airy or awry. One of the walls of the houses started moving and a black shadow approached the girl. Meanwhile, downstairs, posters were spontaneously popping off the walls and falling into a growing pile on the floor. The girl wandered back downstairs where she found herself saying these strange words. The drugs and addiction were my fault and I accept responsibility for that. 
but I was not that way deep down inside. I want to apologize to everyone involved for what I have done. What made those words even stranger was that the girl did not do drugs, let alone have an addiction. Her words didn't seem all that strange to the students who lived in the house. Before they moved in, the house had been inhabited by a man with a very serious addiction. The reason he no longer lived there is he had died of a heroin overdose. So it kind of seems like he took possession of her, her that moment. And the last story I have for you guys is the ghost of Frederick Jordan, who held one of the most lonely and desolate jobs in existence. Jordan was the lighthouse keeper for Penfield Reef Lighthouse off the coast of Fairfield, Connecticut. Built in 1874, the lighthouse was primarily a way of warning ships of a treacherous hidden reef responsible for more than its fair share of harbor accidents. 1960, Hi. Frederick Jordan was the head uh. lighthouse keeper. Tragically, he drowned in a boating accident just before Christmas 1916, when he was caught in a gale while rowing home to see his family. Ever since then, lighting and equipment malfunctions in the lighthouse have been blamed on Jordan's spiritual presence. But even more chilling is that keepers of the Penfield Reef Lighthouse often find the lighthouse logbook open to the day that Jordan died. And locals have recounted witnessing an unidentifiable figure appearing on the water to help stray boats find their way to safety through the reef. So that are- No, goat me. Goat man. <laughs> goat me. Goat me. Goat me. You want them to go watch the goat man video? Yeah? Is it scary? Yeah. What thing? What thing? The uh, haunted, scary mm. stories that Pikachu and I have for you guys tonight. Mm. Right? Ow. Make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget about the giveaway. And down we, below. Down below. Down and below. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.